I'm Tom Sikas for a segment called In Fishermen in the Field, where we'll visit with some of the nation's top anglers to learn when, where, and how to catch more and bigger fish. We'll also review the newest fishing gear and marine equipment and keep an eye on important environmental issues. Today's fishing electronics are absolutely incredible, and there seems to be a never-ending improvements to these fishing electronics. The latest round of advancements yielded a wave of side imaging and down scanning products, some with incredible high definition imagery, offering great promise for enhanced picture perfect views of what lies beneath the surface. Unfortunately, only a fraction of the fishing population has fully reaped the benefits. I asked in fisherman contributor Joe Baylog for some tips on effectively using your side imaging unit. One of the biggest questions I get when I'm out in the, in the fishing world, whether that's at a seminar or a tournament or, or just about anywhere, is, is people always ask me about electronics, and specifically they want to know more about side imaging. I've, I've been a, a, a big side imaging proponent for a number of years. I actually was uh, one of the first people to test and use the Humminbird side imaging technology the year before it came, uh, became available to the public. So, so I was one of the first guys with a modern, you know, bass boat application side imager um, out there fishing. And since that time, I have found it to become, uh, it has become really probably my most valuable piece of equipment, especially for offshore structure fishing. I can honestly say that. There's, there's nothing like it. Uh, but, but people are pretty confused on how it works. You know, traditionally we've been, we've all been used to and grown accustomed to the way that 2D traditional down-looking sonar works and what kind of returns we're getting and what's under the boat versus what we're seeing. And side imaging is totally different. The, the reason for it is, is that traditional sonar sends a, sends a signal down, uh, a cone-shaped signal down, and when that, when that signal is interrupted, it then interprets what's, what's underneath your boat and in that cone. We're all pretty familiar with that. But side imaging, the way it works is the transducer, which is, which is located on the back of the boat, sends out a series of signals in a very thin, um, you know, they, they call it a razor-thin beam, in a very thin beam that tracks all the way from the surface of the water all the way down to the bottom underneath the boat and then back up to the other side on the surface of the water. And, and, and basically what you're doing then is as your boat's traveling along, it's, it's sending out these beams and just, you know, super, super high speeds and then it's interpreting the difference from one beam to the next. So essentially it's kind of like if you went through a darkened room with a flashlight and you just just uh, shone the flashlight and just kind of turned with your body shining that flashlight, you'd see whatever was in that room, whether it was the wall and then something in front of the wall. And then so, so that's essentially what a, what a high-speed uh, side imaging unit is doing. It's just shining that beam of light all across behind from the side all the way down to the bottom of your boat, and it interprets the difference from one to the next. So, so things that that beam is shining on cast shadows just like the flashlight beam. Um, so whether it's a stump on the bottom or a log jam, it's going to cast a shadow, and it's going to essentially draw a picture, a black and white picture. It looks just like a photo of the bottom. So, so it's extremely powerful in that a log looks like a log, a rock looks like a rock, a point in the weeds looks just like that, I mean, I've seen everything from cars on the bottom to tires to shipwrecks to, to you, you name it, you know, crib structures and intake pipes. They all look just like you'd imagine if the lake was, was drained. So, so it gives you a really, really good, clear picture of the bottom. But, but one of the things I think where people really get hung up is they don't know some of the settings and some of the directions and things they can do to take advantage of that, and they get a little overwhelmed. And basically what I want to do today in this format is just give a hard, fast list of some of the settings and some of the things that I do, there's just a few really, that make it easy. The first is your range setting on a side imaging unit. Basically tells you how far you're looking away from the boat. If your range is set on 100 feet, you're looking 100 feet from the boat on each side of your, of, uh, of your transducer. I like to set that range at a maximum of about 100 feet. And when I'm looking in fairly shallow water, like a, a largemouth applications, for instance, where you're going up in a creek looking at stumps, I'll set it down to 50, 60, 70 feet. Basically what you're doing is you're getting, you're getting a smaller range, but you're getting a more detailed, expanded picture. So you can really see what you're looking at. I mean, you, if, if you crank that thing back next time you're out, crank it back to 50 feet, and you'll see it shows you a beautiful picture. Uh, the second is for sensitivity. 
I'll drive over some kind of object. Right at the launch ramp is, is really a good spot because you can actually see the concrete of the ramp on most side imaging units. And I'll turn my sensitivity up high enough that everything looks real sharp and crisp but doesn't start to over-brighten and kind of blow out. If you turn your sensitivity too high, you'll see, like right at the ramp, you'll see the rocks and everything will kind of blow out and get just too bright. Come down one click on your sensitivity, and you're set just about perfect. Um, and then probably the last thing that you really need to learn to do and, and you really need to use is these side imaging machines, that, the Humminbird that I'm using, you can scroll over on that picture when you see something interesting, hit mark, and it'll come up with a waypoint right there on the object that you just marked. So a lot of times I'll drive around, I'll see a stump off to the side of the boat 40, 50, 60 feet, I scroll over, I hit mark, it comes up on my GPS, which is also available on my front screen, and then I can walk, go over there, troll over there, use 2D sonar, and look at that same stump or that brush pile with, you know, that's locked in my GPS now. And I can look at it on 2D, and I can say, okay, yeah, that's, that's what I usually look at. And that's, hey, look, there's that big rock, and this is where the top of it is, and there's the fish I saw hanging on the outside. So, so make sure you utilize that GPS function to mark those exact things and then really check them out. You know, set a fairly low range and keep your sensitivity just right. Um, and you can drive around all day with side imaging. It is mesmerizing. You'll find that you fish a lot less and burn a lot more gas, but, boy, do you learn a lot about the lake. And I think you'll learn more than you've ever learned about structure fishing. That was Joe Baylog. I'm Tom Sekas, and that's In Fisherman in the Field.